Welcome to module 3 of Engineering and Economics. In this module, we will discuss about Introduction to Economics. This PPT has been prepared by referring many sources including figures videos. I wholeheartedly thank everyone and it has been exclusively used for the purpose of education. If you earn money, save money. If you save money, sow money. If you sow money, reap money. This is the catchy word of economics. Every one of us should always understand that economics is not just about earning. Economics is about saving. When we can earn money, we have to save money. Once we save money, we have to sow it. If we sow it, then only we can reap it. Warren Buffett very clearly says, you have to spend money after your savings. It is not that we save after our spendings. So priority should be given to saving and not for spending. So that is the major difference between many other people and Warren Buffett. So once we save money, if we stop there, we are fools. We have to sow it. Sow it in the sense, we have to invest it. If we can invest it, then only we can reap. We can earn more. Earn more, save more, sow more, reap more. This should be the watchword for any person who earns money. That's why I told in the beginning itself, this is a subject not for just examination. This is a subject which is very much essential for your entire life. All of you will start earning, but most of us will spend more and save less. And if we lose the job, then our entire life becomes miserable. Instead, if we had saved enough money, then we can buy some time, we can uh, find for alternatives, we can find for other opportunities so that our life will not become miserable immediately if we lose a job. Especially during this pandemic, many people are losing job. Main problem with most of the Indians is that they do not save money. They just earn it, spend it. Earn it, spend it. If at all anything remains, then spend more. That is the thing. They do not save. So that is the difference between Indians and Western world. Western world, they save a lot. Whereas here, we spend a lot. That's the difference and we have to be very careful. And once we earn money, we should save it. If we can save it, we should sow it. If we can sow it, we can reap it. With this as the introduction, let me proceed towards the further parts of economics. Think this table as your income. See, this table has only one leg. What happens if this leg breaks? If this, this leg is broken, what will happen to the table? The table collapses. Whereas, look at this table, it has four legs. Even if one leg breaks, the table will wobble, but it will not fall down. When second leg also breaks, again it will wobble, but it can still balance. Unless or otherwise the third leg also breaks, the table will not fall. That means your stability of life is more. That's why we should always have multiple incomes. How can we get multiple incomes in the form of savings? When we save, do not invest it on a very high investment priority. Invest on such priorities which can be encashed immediately. 
if you invest on land building you cannot encash it immediately especially during such a pandemic or emergency critical situations this we need money we need cash in such cases we need to invest on such things with which we can get back the cash immediately so that is another way of income if a uh, husband and wife both of them are earning let them earn for few years at least so that some savings can be there as emergency fund in case of emergency in case of critical conditions you can take them out and have a breathing so this is very very important for anyone who starts earning okay till now we just discussed how important for anyone to save money for anyone to have multiple incomes and all those things now we shall just turn our attention towards engineering decision making engineering economics why engineering and economics are studied together all those aspects first let us discuss engineering decision makers see this is one of the several competing engineering designs uh, should be selected this is one of the question that an engineer need to answer the second question should the machine now in use be replaced with a new one this deals with replacement analysis is the old one sufficient uh, to carry on the work or should i go with a new one um, that is what i term it as uh, the replacement analysis the third question with the limited capital available which investment alternative should be funded that's another important question that an engineer need to make there are many alternatives available uh, the resources is limited should i go ahead with a or b or c should i go ahead with this alternative which involves higher risk but higher returns or this alternative which involves lower risk but lower return that is another type of decision that uh, an engineer need to make would it be preferable to pursue a safer conservative course of action or to follow a riskier one that offers higher potential returns that's what i just said now how many units of production have to be sold before uh, profit can be made this is commonly called as break even analysis this is a very important analysis my dear friends for any mechanical engineer or as an engineer at a whole uh, should uh, have a knowledge about whenever you want to become an entrepreneur the first knowledge that you need to possess is that when are you going to break even how long will it take for me to move from loss zone to profit zone how many units must be sold before i move from loss zone to profit zone so at what point of time or point of units am i going to break even that is profit is equal to loss that is a very important analysis whenever uh, we approach banks for loans or financial institutions for loans the first question that they ask is that when are you going to break even earlier we break even earlier uh, will be our uh, movement from loss zone to profit zone the better will be the prospects of getting the loan so this is another important analysis among several proposals for funding that yield substantially equivalent worthwhile uh, results but have different cash flow patterns which is preferable many fundings are available different cash flow patterns are there we will discuss about this cash flow patterns as we move further in this chapter are the benefits expected from a public service project large enough to make its implementation costs acceptable see if i collect money from public and if i start implementing that uh, uh, investment on a project is it uh, is that implementation acceptable can i justify the collection of the funds from public so that is another question that a, an engineer need to answer now we will see how engineering and economics can be merged together engineers always concerned about design construction operation of machines structures and processes engineers pay less attention to resources that is what is normally engineers do 
resources could be physical resources in the form of machines money materials or it could be human resources in the form of men mission of engineers is to transform the resources of nature for the benefit of the human race this is what engineer is engineers take oath they take oath and say that uh, whatever we do service it is for the benefit of the human race that's why engineering is a profession because they are on oath they do service for them uh, money is secondary whereas benefits to human race is primary so their earning becomes secondary and uh, benefits to human race become primary aspect and whatever they do whatever they design whatever they renovate invent or whatever they do everything is towards the benefits of human race limited resources are added uh, have added a pressing dimension to engineering valuation see this is very very important here now i am going to bring in economics portion limited resources what was happening till now there was no dearth of resources population was less land availability was no more natural resources were available in plenty in abundance never we felt that there could be a shortage of resources that the prediction is that at this present level of consumption of petroleum by 2050 entire earth will be out of petroleum products another 30 years or so now we have to go for alternative sources of energy that's what the entire world is moving towards alternative uh, non conventional renewable sources of energies so this is what is the present demand now and that's why engineering is being looked from a different dimension now that uh, dimension is nothing but economics so now engineering and economic they need to work together they are not separate we have just understood that why economics is very important for engineering engineers just can't say that my job is just to design produce send it for marketing that's all no as an engineer you need to prove that the resources that you are using are minimized cost is minimized because resources are scarce they are not available in abundance they are getting depleted day by day looking into all these things what is important is that engineering and economics are inseparable they need to go hand in hand the choice is among alternatives feasible alternatives need to be identified and then defined for subsequent analysis only the differences in expected future outcomes among the alternatives are relevant to their comparison and should be considered for comparison whatever uh, the future outcomes are there between the alternatives must be compared together the prospective outcomes of the feasible alternatives economic and other should be consistently developed from a defined viewpoint we need to have a very defined viewpoint we need to understand that a feasible alternative will produce some outcome which is in line with the requirement of the economics and other aspects of any nation or any company using a common unit of measurement normally rupees or dollars or whatever the currency of that particular country holds that is the common unit of measurement that everyone uses it for analysis that is a common language everybody can understand that nowadays the entire world does the transaction using dollars because that is assumed to be one of the uh, strong uh, rather than strongest one of the most stable currency in the world that's why the entire world does the transaction in dollars selection of preferred alternative requires a use of criterion the decision process should consider the outcomes enumerated in the monetary unit why monetary unit is considered because everybody can understand it. everybody can understand uh, the language of money rather than uh, 
a, a qualitative term like uh, better uh, product, better quality and all those things which cannot be readily measured. Whereas money can be readily seen, measured, enjoyed and compared. That's why everyone prefer to compare the alternatives based on money. Next point is uncertainty is inherent. That's what you need to understand as an engineering economist. Uncertainty is there. What is certain in this world is uncertainty. So you just can't move away from uncertainty. Uncertainty is always there. Till February, did any one of us even uh, think about uh, this pandemic that uh, that will be imported from China? No, none of us uh, even had a glimpse of that. But starting from March, the entire country has slipped into a recession. We are struggling. Many of them have lost job. Economy is uh, trembling. All these things are happening because of uncertainty. Natural disasters may occur. That's uncertainty. So what is certain in economic is uncertainty. And we should plan accordingly. That is what is important. And we should have that factor in our mind whenever we are planning, whenever we are doing the analysis, comparison, selection of alternatives in our own decision making. We should understand that uncertainty is there. Improved decision making results from an adaptive process. Adaptive in the sense we need to be flexible, dynamic. We need to change as per the required situation. That is another important point that uh, an engineering economist should look into. Okay. Till now we discussed about uh, the various aspects of uh, principles of engineering economics. What are the courses of action he need to take? We could understand that uh, engineering and economics are inseparable. Uncertainty is there. Uh, available of alternatives are there. We have to select a feasible alternative. We shall discuss about uh, the problem solving and decision making techniques. Normally what happens Economics from the accumulated knowledge of engineering and economics identifies a preferred course of action. This is the actual problem solving process. How it happens, let us try to understand. First step, problems in engineering and managerial economics uh, originate in the real world of the economics planning, management and control. They originate, this, this problem this problem originates in the real world. We can read that. What do you mean by real world? We can read that. We can understand that. We can really see that. We can feel that. That is why it is called as real data, uh, real world. Okay. And from the real world, the data is collected. Because it is a readily available data. And with this data, we move towards the second step. This Combine information with the scientific uh, principle supplied by the analyst to formulate a hypothesis. What is a hypothesis? Hypothesis is the expected uh, course of results. That is an assumption. This is what is going to happen. And in order to prove that hypothesis or check that hypothesis, I am going to do experiments. And using the experimental results, we are going to predict. And all these things happen in symbolic world. This is not real world. So whether it is hypothesis, as I said, assumption. You are doing experimentation. You are not sure about the result. You are just doing the experimentation. Based on the outcome of the experiments, you are predicting something. But still we are not sure whether that is the real outcome or not. Now we will move to the third step. By manipulating and experimenting with the abstractions of the real world, the analyst can stimulate configurations of the reality. Whatever the results of the experiments came, that will be verified. Where? In the real world. So you are going to implement the results of the experiments. And when I really implement that, then I will see whether they are as per my requirement or not then you need to improve. 
we will work towards improvement and whenever i am working i am in the real world i am actually implementing that i am actually working on that when i am working on that it is nothing but the real world that means everything can be seen felt measured that's why it is real world once again i collect the data i may come across the problem again this cycle repeats this is the cycle that moves from the real world to symbolic world from symbolic world to real world uh, using the data in the real world to hypothesis in the symbolic world again verification in the real world and the cycle repeats till that problem is solved with the most feasible solution there are three problem solving techniques first one is intuition and analysis engineering decision is based on data from the past performances and establishes a course of action that will result in some future outcomes when everything is based on the past data we normally uh, follow that data to get the future outcomes when the outcomes uh, the de decision are not of much importance it is possible by intuition let us understand what is intuition according to albert einstein the intuition mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant we have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift what is that gift it's the intuitive intuitive mind according to einstein intuitive mind is a sacred gift it means many wonders have happened because of intuition even though it's very difficult to establish the scientific base for intuition but many a times we achieve uh, the things because of our intuition not uh, because of scientific data or previous data the judgments are often formalized by standard operating procedures the sop forms re uh, represent collective intuitive derived from experiences our past experience uh, will help us to prepare for a future outcome as the solution procedure uh, uh, progress factors that are difficult to quantify often arise sometimes uh, many factors arise that uh, that is very difficult to quantify i can't say why they occur but it occurs judgment enters the process in determining whether a solution is well enough found to be accepted or not this is how it appears from the past i come to present make a decision and go to future so this decision may be with the help of intuition which is a sacred gift or may be with the help of an analysis based on the previous data science engineering everything so it problem could be solved either with the help of intuition or with the help of analysis but one thing is true for every decision we cannot uh, depend on analysis only even intuition should also be given due importance the next problem solving techniques is uh, tactics and strategy strategy sets ultimate objectives and the associated tactics define the multiple maneuvers required to achieve the objectives strategy is the ultimate objective and tactic is to achieve those strategies a strategic decision ideally selects the overall plan that makes the best use of organization resources in accordance with the long term objectives a strategic decision normally what happens uh, it selects the overall plan by uh, utilizing the organization resources to the best ability and when it is utilizing the resources of the organization a strategy will always follow organization's long term objectives it will not deviate uh, from the long term objectives so whatever it is achieving they are all in line with long term objectives of the organization a strategic industrial decision could be a choice from several different product designs to develop the uh, product or to 
products to promote. A strategic plan can be implemented in number of ways. For example, uh, each industrial uh, design or product has practical alternatives or tactics like which kind of machine to employ or materials to use. This is a very common problem that every engineer need to face. Which machine to be procured? One of the uh, study has revealed that uh, Indian workers are so skilled that they produce uh, the tolerance limit that a CNC machine can achieve. It's a fact. It's a fact and I have seen with my own eyes uh, people working in Bangalore company, their precision is so tight, so wonderful. They meet very tight tolerances which otherwise uh, only CNC machines can do. But their uh, tolerance limits sometimes are even better than CNC machines tolerance limits. That is the skill set they have. Okay. And uh, this is one aspect an engineer need to think of. Should I employ uh, a new brand new CNC machine or can I carry away with the old lathe itself, turning center itself. So strategy is towards achieving the objective and tactics are towards achieving this strategy. That is the difference between strategy and tactics. This is the difference between strategy and tactics. Very clear. See, tactics uh, are doing, as we have already discussed, they are the ways of achieving strategy. Strategy is towards planning, large scale, why I am doing that, difficult to copy, long term frame. Okay, whereas here we can very clearly see that this long term frame can be achieved with this short term frames in the form of tactics. Look at the tactics, it's a for a smaller scale, it answers the question how it is easy to copy and finally they are all towards short term frame to achieve all these things that is uh, the a strategy. The third problem solving technique is sensitivity and sub optimization. This is done to explore the effects of deviations from original plan conditions. Normally what happens whenever we do a plan, whenever we start implementing new problems arise and when new problems arise the original plan gets deviated sometimes it will be scrapped also so that is what is important uh, in sensitive sensitivity in sub optimization sub optimization occurs when there is larger problem than the analyst had visualized what is important here is sometimes we come across a larger problem than we had anticipated three perspectives lead to suboptimization the cross eyed view wherein both organizations and individuals can be confused by opposing objectives when you are implementing a strategy with the help of tactics opposition could be there from workers you should have anticipated that uncertainty is certain but sometimes what happens, the objectives of the individual and the organization is entirely different. They are moving in totally opposite directions. Then the problem is not small. The problem is a very large problem. So that is the first case of suboptimization. Second case is a short sighted view. The tactics adopted may not have the same efficiency in the long run. You come across a particular tactic that yielded result in the short run and you try to continue with it without understanding that this tactic may not have a long term success. The success rate may go on reducing, you might not have visualized that. Many political parties indulge in such short sighted views. In the long run, it may not succeed, but in the short run, it may succeed and they try to implement such things especially during election time. 
they do not uh, want to take any kind of risk during election time once the election is over then they will take any sort of risk this is an example of short sighted view the third standpoint is tunnel vision view point departments understand the organizational goals but individually go about working in ways that hurt the common goals in the first one they were in totally opposite direction but in the third type they may understand the organization goals it is not that they want to deviate but when it comes to individual interests they can't say no to their individual interests that is where japanese are entirely different and that's how japanese after uh, being defeated uh, in world war 2 can come and occupy the third best economy in the world how could they do that it is because for them organization view point is the only view point they do not have any individual interests for them always organization comes first family comes second in this way they could achieve what they are today engineering economic decision means what is it it appears something like this okay the entire economics is being explained over here engineering economist enters the maze here and he has to come up with a decision while coming up with a decision he has to pass through so many constraints so many strategies so many alternatives so many tactics so many rules with all these things he has to consider and then finally come out of the maze so your engineering economics it encompasses the entire engineering economics maze and we will understand uh, each and every part of that as we move further thank you